so the most fundamental aspect of electricity the things with the the stuff which actually started all of this was static electricity what is static electricity it is electricity which is not really moving let's understand how it is produced how it is made we'll again go back to a very basic thing something which is there in all the matter and that is atom it is the most basic aspect of all the matter that we see around us what is this atom made of well, you might already know that this atom is made up of two basic components there is a nucleus at the center and then there are these electrons which go around this nucleus of course the nucleus is again made up of neutrons and protons right so inside this nucleus there are two other basic particles neutrons and protons if you look at it the neutrons are not really important from a electricity point of view but protons are indeed important these electrons and these protons have a very special property which is known as charge now it is a very basic intrinsic property just like the mass we have right the mass of my mass all the all the material that you see around you has mass and the property mass of an object right the property called mass of an object gives gives it the its weight so mass is a basic property it is an intrinsic property of an, of an object you cannot question where it comes from <laughs> right we cannot really question that similarly charge is also a very basic property of an object of a, of these particles electrons and protons they have this property called charge we are not really questioning where it comes from we just accept it that there is they have this property called charge another thing to note is the charge on this electron is really different i know scientists did some experimentation and they understood that the charge of this electron was different than the charge of protons to keep things sim simple they just named the charge on the electron as negative and the charge that what that was there on the proton as positive i mean understand that this naming was 100% arbitrary i could have called one jill and another one jack that would have been fine too i mean not many people would be happy with that but it is just a convention we say that the charge on an electron is negative and the charge on the proton is positive that's what we are saying now typically the number of electrons and the number of protons in an atom is the same if you look at things around you that is what you would find that number of protons is equal to number of electrons they each have one unit of charge okay that's what we'll call it we'll just call it one unit of charge whatever it is we are not bothered about the exact value we'll just call it that okay that's let's say that they have one unit of charge so what would happen the negative charges outside in the electrons in the electrons right the negative charges outside would be completely balanced by the positive charges inside in the nucleus so on the whole if you look at the atom it would be what we say electrically neutral it doesn't carry any charge so if you were to measure the charge on an on such an atom it would come out to be zero and you will be very happy okay that everything is zero everything is zero okay good sometimes however what happens is we can excite these electrons so like there is a new there is a nucleus right here and this electron is going around what i can do is that i can provide extra energy to to this electron and it would just fly away now i have really separated the electron i'll just say e minus so that it's negative charge from the proton so i have really separated these two now i have a a nucleus a a, a proton right a nucleus which is really positively charged and an electron which is really negatively charged and they are different now i now i have created these charges with these charges i can produce electricity right so once we have separation of charges then we can do something with it we can produce electricity so now that we have understood every everything about the charges let's try to create in an experimental situation something where we'll see how the how we can separate out these charges let's try to separate the charges and get a feel for this right just look at some behavior so here i have number of paper bits okay they are small scrap of paper very 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 small 
And here I have a scale, okay? This experiment I'm pretty sure you must have done. If you've not done, then just do it. It's a plastic scale, normal, regular scale. And I'm frantically rubbing on it on my hair. You might think that I've gone really crazy. I've been hit by electrical current, <laughs> but that's not the case, I assure you. Now let's just try to bring it near this. Oh, look what is happening, okay? So these bits of paper are really attracted to this scale. So what has happened here? What did I do? What am I doing when I am rubbing this, my scale against my hair? What did I do? What did I, would I, what did I do to actually cause this, this attraction? Okay, normally a scale wouldn't do this, mind you. Okay, only when I rub it against my hair, I am doing something. So what happens when I rub this scale against my hair, like very frantically, okay, mind you, you have to do that too. When I do that, then electrons from my hair actually jump and stick to this scale. Oh, that is literally what is happening. This scale is providing energy to those electrons like when I'm rubbing it and the electrons are really knocked out from my hair and they jump and stick to this scale, which makes this scale really negatively charged. Okay, so that's what happens. This scale is now negatively charged. Now this negatively charged scale can attract those bits of paper which are lying down. How the attraction works, we'll see it in a little bit. In, in the next slide, we'll see it. But just see, see that, that, that there's an attraction between this negatively charged scale and the tips, very tips of this paper, which become sort of positively charged. And then they're attracted together, right? Negative and positive, they attract. And this is the basic principle. Now, you must have seen, or you might have actually, your teacher might have done this experiment for you at your school. The idea is when we rub certain things together, there's always some, one thing which gets positive charged and the other thing which gets negative charged. These things you have to remember, unfortunately, at least a few of those you have to remember because they can be asked in your exam. So here are a few things that I have listed which I found important. Glass rod and silk, if you rub them together, glass rod would become positively charged, the silk would become negatively charged. Same thing would happen with woolen cloth and ammonite, amber and rubber. Okay, and then woolen cloth with plastic, same thing would happen. And of course, dry hair and plastic comb or balloon. If I do that, then the same thing would happen. Balloon, I'm pretty sure you must have used it. But the part is rub the balloon and stick it to the wall. Okay, so same thing would happen. The hair gets positively charged. The electrons are pulled away from here and they stick to the balloon or the plastic comb. So that is indeed what is happening here.